Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, I'll show you how I painted the scrap piles from Kill Team Octarius. This is the scrap pile we use for the example in this video, but from all the techniques you see, you'll be able to apply those to all the different scrap piles and bits of terrain that are included. I use the core book as my reference, and if you flick over to page 5 in the core book, you'll see here that there's the example of this particular scrap piece. So we can use that as a reference point to get our colours right, and you can see these colours also work across all the other pieces. I also use the Octarius rulebook, and this has got some great close-ups of some of the other scrap piles, like this one here. I'm going to paint it a little bit different to this though, but as a reference goes, I think this is spot on, and you can see it matches up to this piece, so you'll be able to copy that and um, do these colours if you choose. But for priming these pieces, I use the Mechanicus Standard Grey Citadel spray paint, and just follow the instructions on the back. Really important to shake it for those two minutes, get it the right temperature, and it was £12.50 with a 10% discount at my local store. We'll be using lots of contrast paints and technical paints in this video, and I'll put a list in the description, as well as some links where you can save 20% off the RRP. Right, let's get started. So with this, I've got the painted handle, I've got a ton of white and blue tack, and this is just going to hold that really nicely and give us access to the entire model, so we can spin that round and paint it really easily. The first paint we'll be using is the base paint Lead Belcher, and I've just got this cheap makeup brush, very vegan brand, and you can get these for like a pound at your local pound store or cheap at the dollar store, and this is perfect for this kind of overbrush technique that we're going to do. And ideally, you could have primed this in lead belcher. I couldn't get hold of a lead belcher spray can, so I went with grey, and then I'm going to go with this technique. And with a soft, big brush like this, it doesn't take long at all to cover a large area, and you can see I'm going over it quite roughly in circular motions and then back and forth, really trying to get into all those crevices and use the texture of the model to get that paint right in there and just give it a good coat. And I'm only going to do this once, just one coat is all we need for this. And then when that's dry, I'm going to start with some Drakenhof Nightshade, and I thought I'd paint this in like a dark blue shade. Now I want it to look metallic, so this is kind of like a toolbox or it's got some parts of mechanical devices in, and so I think this will be like really cool in like a nice blue metallic colour. So I'm just giving it one nice generous coat of this all over, and then that's going to dry, and you still see some of that lead belcher coming through. And I really like this technique of using the lead belcher paint with either a shade or a contrast over the top. I think you can get some really nice effects from it. So I'm just continuing to go over it, make sure I get all around the edges, of this, these trays and the part of the toolbox as well, and give that a nice coat, getting in amongst the tools as well. Our next paint is Contrast Yandan Yellow, and for this I'm using a different brush. I've gone for a little bit bigger brush here. It's just a cheap one, but if you compare it to a size 2, that should give you a good idea of how big it is. Now I made a mistake here. I went over the whole barrel in this. I thought it might look cool to have that metallic effect, but it just didn't look right, and to try and compensate, I was putting too much of the contrast paint on. So what I did, and you'll see this later in the video, is I go back over it with a wraith bone and then paint it again. But I've left it in just to show you that things don't always go right, but it's pretty easy to kind of put any mistakes correct. And now I'm going to take a contrast black Templar and I'm going to go over all this tyre portion. But I'm trying to let these little metal bits that go over the tyre still remain that silver colour. So I'm taking my time. I've still got that big brush though, which gives a nice thick even coat. And this black is great. It's going to cover up that lead belcher, so it won't have a metallic effect with this. And you'll find this with some of the contrast paints. Some are thicker than others, and you know this particular one won't let much of that metallic come through, so it'll almost work as a rubber tyre effect. Next we've got the Contrast Blood Angels Red, and this is going to be for all the parts that have come off some kind of plane or flyer, and this is going to go all over it. You can see I'm being quite generous here, I'm putting quite a lot on, and this red is a great paint to work with. I've used this on some larger areas in the past, so I know I can really spread this around, and it works really well, especially over lead belcher. It's got a really nice texture to it once it's dry, so these paints can go over nice and smooth, and you can be quite generous. So this is going to go all over, and then I'm just being careful, trying to have less paint on my brush when I come up to another part of the model that's a different colour, and just taking my time using the texture of the model there. Now we're going to go with Gilliman Flesh, and this is perfect over Lead Belcher for a kind of bronzy, metallic look, and I really like this effect. Used it a lot with Warcry when doing the terrain, and so I'm going to apply that here too. You can see from some of the pictures of the scrap piles and different terrain, this almost bronze 
uh, look to the metal crops up every now and then. So this is perfect time to use this technique of the Gilliman flesh. So just putting it on, not too thick now, no, certainly not as much as that Blood Angels red. And this is quite a thin coat. We're gonna do lots of other things to it to bring out the texture of the model. But now we're gonna move on to Contrast Agarus Dunes. And this is gonna give us a gold look. So this is gonna go on this tank here and this is gonna break it up. So it's really nice to have these colors that complement the board. So we've got those almost like fleshy, yellowy colors that are gonna come through from the desert. Then we take some Null Oil, and this is gonna go over pretty much everything that we haven't painted yet. So any silver parts are gonna get this. I don't mind if it goes on to something I've already painted, like the Gillum and Flesh, or even the black. It really doesn't matter. In fact, that'll probably help just tie all these different sections together. And I'm putting quite a lot on here, sticking with that big brush, really pushing it in, starting and ending my brush stroke where I want most of that paint to build up. And then going over these little bits that are almost like buckles holding these little pipes down, so giving them a little bit too. Really not taking uh, much care here. You can see I'm being really rough and ready and getting it on there and going over the little um, cogs and tools. And now I'll put quite a lot in that toolbox and also on the little emblem here on the barrel. Then I'm gonna take some Caraberg Crimson Shade. And I've never used this before, but I wondered what it would look like over the top of this Blood Angels Red as the image I saw in the book was a little bit almost like burgundy. So I'm just putting it on, but you can see I'm not putting hardly any on and I'm not going right up to the edges either. I want that Blood Angels Red to come through as the kind of highlight, but just use this to give it a richer, deeper tone to the colour. Now it's time for some technical paint, some typhus corrosion, and this is gonna go over a lot of the metals, the silvers that we've done. And so with this, I've got a really scruffy old brush, dipped it in the paint, and then I just dab it on some kitchen roll, because I don't wanna put it on too heavy. I'm just like um, stippling it on. So I'll, it's not like loads of paint. You can see I want lots of that metal to still come through, but I just wanna dirty it up, make it look grungy. And so I keep going back to the pot, then just wipe it off on some kitchen towel, and then just put it on. I've got lots of control then. Now we're going back to that barrel, and so I'm gonna paint it with some Wraithbone paint, and I'm gonna give this two coats of paint to bring it right back down to like a base color. And two coats will give us a nice even color to go over when we do the yellow again. So once that dried, I did two coats all together, then grabbed that Contrast Yandan yellow, and I went over it with this. Now, I think this yellow I found isn't too great on large areas, and um, I've used it a lot in the past, but on smaller models and trying to use this particular paint on a big area hasn't worked out very well. On some of the other pieces of the terrain, it's not all that great and you have to do it quite thin. But here I've put a little bit too much on and I wasn't happy with this, but you kind of pull it back later on as you do some more layers to it. But here I'm going over the side of the barrel now, putting the paint on. And when this dries, I give it another coat of a Yandan yellow because I didn't think it it came out very well and it looked a little bit streaky. So if you don't like the look of this finished barrel with the contrast paint, you might wanna try a base paint for this and Avalon Sunset would be a good color. And then you could continue with these following steps, which are typhus corrosion. And once that yellow dried, I just dabbed quite a bit of that on there to really dirty this barrel up. Then we grabbed the layer Stormhost Silver and another vegan makeup brush. And this one's a little bit smaller dip it in the paint there. I'm gonna work it into the bristles on some kitchen towel and then wipe off a lot of the paints. So there's hardly any left on the brush. And then that's gonna give us a nice dry brush that we can bring out some nice highlights on these scrap piles. And here I go really gently at first because I don't know how much paint's gonna come off. So you see I'm being really like careful, just trying to catch those raised areas. And this is gonna bring the model to life. We've dulled it down with that null oil. Then we dulled it down again with the typhus corrosion, but now we're gonna add this nice highlight and that's gonna really show off the textures of the model, the different patterns we've got from stippling on that typhus corrosion, and it's really gonna bring the piece to life. So just being really gentle all the time and then working my way around, looking for those uh, like straight edges and lines and just trying to do like a downward stroke, letting the model work for me and then just moving it around so the model's moving and, and not me so much, so making it nice and easy. And here I wanted a nice highlight on the side and top of that um, little tank there. So here I go a little bit rougher now. I know how much paint's left, so I can be a bit more rough, trying to catch those sharp edges and really working in amongst all the textures. And then on the barrel, I really went for it. I wasn't all that happy 
with how that was looking. So I thought, let's cover it up with a bit of highlighting and then we can put some rust on it and some gunk and stuff and um, that should make it a lot better. But I learned a lot from doing this one and applied that to the other scrap piles and got a much better result. But there we go, you can see that's really brought it to life now. So now I'm gonna take another dry paint, which is riser rust. And I put a little bit on a scruffy brush and then I rub that off on the kitchen towel and then I just go on stippling it on again. Now I'm being really careful, I don't want it too heavy, I don't want too much. The yellow against that, um, sorry, the, the yellow from that Yandon yellow against this orange are clashing a little bit. So I eased off a bit on the barrel, but you can see here on the pipes and the metalwork, it looks really cool. And this combo of typhus corrosion and riser rust works really nicely. But I think I like to just go really gentle with it. I don't go over the top, quite subtle and popping it in. You can see a little bit too much on the brush there, but it's really forgiving and I just wipe it off with my finger and it always just blends it in and then it's not so like bright, it's really calmed it down. Then I took another technical paint, Nurgle's Rot, got a big blob on my brush and I'm just gonna imagine that some of this is coming out of that barrel and that's gonna not just cover up the bit that I don't like about it, but it's also just gonna add another effect and also show off a different technical paint because this is a great one to use for all sorts of uses and I think it'll work really nicely here. And there we go, there's our first scrap pile painted to a tabletop ready standard with contrast paints, a few technical paints and some shades. And I was really happy with how it turned out. Not so much with the barrel, but I certainly learned from that and applied it to some of the other sections of these scrap piles. And then I think the other yellow metallic part came out a lot better. And you can see that here. This looks, I think, a lot better than the barrel. So yeah, it's really good to learn from your mistakes and try and rectify it and improve on the techniques on your next piece. But for this kind of terrain, you don't want this to be the star of the show anyway. It's all about the miniatures. So having this kind of uniform technique across it all, and I'll be applying some of these techniques to the larger pieces as well, is really great. And I'm sure the orc here won't mind what that barrel looks like. I'll put a list of all the paints I use in the description below, and I'll also link those to Element Games and Wayland Games, where you can save up to 20% off the RRP of all these paints. And you can also pick up the main game there with some great discounts. At the moment, Kill Team Octarius at Wayland Games is going for 111.90, so you're saving 10%, but Element Games are doing it for 99.99, so you're saving a huge 20% there. So I'll put links to all this in the description. There'll be affiliate links, but they won't cost you anything extra. You'll save all that money, and you'll also support the channel as I get a small commission too. So thanks so much for that. If you'd like to check out my other videos, I've done some on how to build the Cree Kill Team, an Orc Commando kill team using the models from the Octarius box set. I've also done a review and unboxing of two of the dice packs and an unboxing of the main game. And there's loads more content. I'll be painting all the different parts of it, the different models, the terrain, and going through a complete rule series as well. So look out for all that already on the channel and coming really soon. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope this gave you an idea of how you can quickly and easily get these painted up tabletop ready. I'm in quite a hurry to get this game painted and ready for battle. I can't wait to make videos, play in some games and go through all the rules. It's a really awesome set with some great pieces. But let me know what you think in the comment sections below. I'd love to hear from you. But for now, thanks so much for watching. Please like if you like it, subscribe for more videos like this and don't forget to hit the notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. If you like this kind of content and would like to support the channel, then please check out my Patreon page. And thanks to everyone who's joined so far. It's really awesome. We hang out on Discord, talk about the hobby, share ideas and help each other out. And you'll get some perks there that you're not going to find anywhere else. So I'll put a link in the description. And it'll be great to see you there.